Let's head to the Canberra Times where that ACM survey continues to make front page news. Let's take a look at that headline, your reasons for voting yes or no. The voice will, voice will finally recognise the First Peoples of Australia and help address the problem of racism and Indigenous disadvantage. That is the number one reason for people planning to vote yes at the upcoming referendum. But among those who intend to vote no, well, the main reason cited in a survey of more than 10,000 people is that we already have a federal parliament to make decisions for all Australians and we don't need more government cost and bureaucracy. Now, we've had a look at the breakdown of those votes last night and it does look as though the only people voting yes are in Canberra, which is, again, at odds with what Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has continually been saying. The idea of recognition to a voice did not come from here in Canberra. This has arisen from the bottom up. This is something that hasn't arisen in Canberra. Something that Indigenous Australians are asking for. This has been a grassroots movement, a process that began far from Canberra. But tonight it was revealed that another small, I would say minute, group of people will be backing The Voice. That being, surprise, surprise, the Hollywood elite. It's an extraordinary time for an extraordinary country. It does make me sad that there's a lot of fear being generated about a really positive moment for us as, as a nation. And, you know, we have to remember that the, the primacy of Parliament is not under threat. It's not under threat. There's a certain voice that is never really an, in a non-partisan way, in an eternal way, represented at that table, and that's an Indigenous voice. And we, it's time we evolved to include all Australians. Ah, uh, Jem, I was always also wondering where the face of Kevin Rudd's Australia 2020 Summit from 2008, Kate Blanchett, had been. Lo and behold, here she is, just in time, promoting a movie, no less, to talk about The Voice. What's your take on the survey by ACM? I think it's uh, 10,000 people is, is pr a pretty big sample size and shouldn't be sniffed at. No, it's a, it's a big sample size. I'm not certainly not the expert pollster, but it, as you know, it depends on how questions are framed and all of those sorts of things. But mm. what, we, what we do know is that the, this voice looks like it's going to fail and it fails for one reason, and that's because the Prime Minister and his Cabinet... Ha well, actually, I shall say two reasons. The Prime Minister and his Cabinet have failed to articulate to the Australian people why this is a good reason in practical terms. I don't think anyone with a brain and a conscience disagrees with the concept. That's not in dispute. But the execution is mm. everything. And they have failed. And, and, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but as Paul Keating said, if you don't know, vote no. And that's what people are doing because they don't know. But worse than that, the Prime Minister has and the members of Cabinet have shamed Australians who've simply come to the table with questions. They have been called morally mm. deficient, all of this kind of thing. The other reason it's going to fail, in my view, is because of clips like we just saw. Hollywood elites, people who live in inner-city enclaves who don't have any idea, who, like me, haven't spent a lot of time in country, if any, and they're sitting there telling us, I wonder mm. if Kate Blanchett could go through line, chapter and verse, the implications on the Constitution, <laughs> just how is it going to improve outcomes for everyday Indigenous Australians and stop the systemic disadvantage that Australian Indigenous people mm. have been living in? Nobody can, nobody can explain that. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, let's head to the Australian now because maybe one person that may be able to do that tomorrow, and he's hoping, Labor a voice box of priorities because Linda Burney, the Indigenous Affairs Minister, is set to give a hallmark speech tomorrow and she has revealed that health, education, jobs and housing as the four policy priorities on which she will ask the Indigenous voice to provide advice as she is forced to define its remit and silence criticism from the no camp. And Simon... Uh, Simon Benson, who is a political editor for The Australian, writes tomorrow, Bernie prepares to launch Operation Damage Control. Linda Burney is now seeking the, amor to amoriliate the damage she and the government helped inflict the Yes campaign for The Voice in the final week of Parliament before the winter break. That is uh, live now on theaustralian.com.au and it is a, a very interesting read as we head to the NPC address tomorrow.